Well, LeVar Bell, I mean LeVar Ball, you guys have really turned this guy into a star. And I blame the ESPN and the NBA for allowing this to take place. We understand y'all have nothing really going on with college sports or pro, I mean pro sports. And college sports has more buzz than the NBA. If you ask the fans today who their favorite teams are, no matter what city, they're going to say Golden State or Cleveland. Two teams. What about the other 2% saying San Antonio and that's about it. Them the only two games or two teams that people really watch. People who fan in San Antonio are people from San Antonio. They gonna ride with the Spurs no matter what. Other than that, nobody else really cares. But everybody's gonna watch a Golden State game. Everybody's gonna watch the Cavs. Because that's what they promote to you. So you're being punished by... All these great games that are being played in the league, the people are not televising those games because the interest in the promotion is Golden State, Cleveland. Now, they know they have a problem with incoming talent. They don't understand it, these new people there. So they look for the show, the Ball Brothers. When they come to the league, this is a great story. One writer wrote it up and interviewed the dad. And the dad is this crazy guy who makes all these predictions. My son is better than Steph Curry right now. And grabbing headlines attention. They used that as juice for the NBA. Gave this guy a platform. He's talked about on ESPN. He's talked about on. They put him on Undisputed. Which made me very angry to see him sitting in that chair knowing he had no business sitting in that chair whatsoever. They better all put me on the show. And him with that big old brown tooth. I got a 4K TV and all I can see is this big brown tooth taking over the whole interview. Hey, yeah, let me see my boys. My boys, they all that. And he just keeps running his mouth, playing one-on-one like he was this great basketball player. He's the greatest basketball player to ever accomplish nothing in the league. He didn't accomplish anything in college. And then he's saying, yeah, Michael Jordan's sons, all these superstar sons, they came out to be nothing. LeBron James, Michael Jordan, and look at my sons. It's like all of them great. I mean, the thing is, it's a team game. No matter what talents your son possess individually, that doesn't mean that's going to translate over to the NBA. He got three sons, one play for UCLA, The other one is still in high school. They just lost. And the other one is even younger. So, who knows? They both have great skills. I mean, they they have some good skills about them. But they're not really NBA ready to me. Watching them, they're not. It's going to take some development. It's going to take some camps and what have you. But then there's a line he crossed. I know what he was trying to say. But it's what he said. And felt like he had the okay to go further than the journalists and the people that sit in the chairs. He said, you got LeBron. It's going to be hard for his kids. Because they're going to look at them like, you got to be just like your dad. And after a while, that pressure starts sitting on you. Like, why do I got to be like him? Why can't I just be me? And then they're going to be like, ah, you soft. You not that good. Because the expectations is very, very high. My sons are good. They great. But let's say I really excelled in football and made millions and millions of dollars. Do do I spend that time with them now? No. I have to worry about the offseason 
and just buy them a trainer and hope that they turn out okay. Whereas the fact that I wasn't all that allows me to take the time to make my boys all that. So he finds a way to saying that because I failed in my career, wasn't like you didn't try to go out there. You tried and you sucked. So you didn't make it. But yeah, you would have been that guy making millions of dollars in all season hiring them a trainer. Had you made it. <laughs> but you didn't. Now you have no choice but to try to eat off them because you missed your boat. So I get it, but tell it like it really is. You weren't good enough. You didn't make it. Now I'm going to train my sons so I hopefully they can make it and then I can eat off them. And they'll be all right. We have yet to see what they're going to do in the NBA. He doesn't have a child in the NBA. He has a kid that is in college. And his involvement and his criticism, his son just lost a high school game in the state championship on his team, and he comes out and blasts the coach. Now, see, if this is the kind of stuff that people are going to have to worry about in the NBA, this will cause teams to lose interest in drafting his son. Because you, you think you're going to be able to do that to the Lakers? You think you're going to be able to be magic, 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 you can get involved and get my son some players. You got one time to say that to magic in L.A. You and your son will be on the bus. Man, I can't believe they gave me a, a bus ticket and got us up out of here. <laughs> you got to understand, sometimes it's best to not say anything. Just keep your mouth shut. So LeBron James answers to this and said look keep my kids name out your mouth keep my family out your mouth this is dad to dad it's a problem now you know you don't criticize his 12 year old son who's out there playing basketball you don't do that to kids I criticize LeBron James all the time You've never heard me mention his family. You've never heard me mention anything about his wife. Except for I'm proud of him that he married the woman of his, that had his children. I'm very proud that he did that and took care of his community. I always say that about LeBron James. And never have I ever went out to someone's children. That's cowardly. If I had a problem with them or if I had a problem with what they have done... I deal with just that. You don't see me disrespect Meek Mill's children or his child. You're not supposed to. There's no reason to. You don't disrespect people's wives. You don't disrespect people's children. That's just, that's common sense. And he's not a commentator. And he's got to understand he's talking about a 12-year-old kid who I understand what you were trying to say. But you got to understand that your sons are not the only sons on the planet. They're not playing one-on-one -on -one basketball out there. It's a team game. So there's other players on the team. They have parents too. You're talking about this kid as if he's a, in college or something. He's a 12-year-old boy whose father is LeBron James. So he knows about the pressure of what he's got to go through. He knows about that. And if he don't make it to the, to the pros, so be it. It ain't the end of the world for him. He playing basketball because he want to play ball. You ever thought about that? You think he needs to play ball to survive? He doesn't. He wants to play basketball. There's nothing wrong with that. So I just think that sometimes he needs to learn not to say anything. Because at first it was funny. Ah, LeVar Ball, man, he crazy. Now people starting to see what I'm saying. Yeah, I think it's time. Yeah, he need to shut up now. 
You see, it takes it takes brothers a while sometimes to catch up to the reality of what people are really on. You know, he's getting he's getting fame struck. He see this this is the thing that I said separates him from the Williams sister. You see, the Williams father, what he did was made sure his daughters were trained. He stepped out the way, and he knew they were great. But when he told you they was great, that was in interviews. When they interviewed them, and then they started playing. And he said, wait till you see Vinny. Uh, you think Venus is something, wait till you see Serena. She going to be even better. There's nothing wrong with saying that about your kids. But did you see him on all the talk shows? No. He stayed out the way. He stayed on the side. He stayed quiet. He let them have their own fame. He was just there to protect them as children. Now that they grown women in their lives, do you see him out there? He go to the games to support his kids. He ain't on, C he on CBS doing an interview. He not on NBC doing interviews. He stayed back. But when they children, they doing interviews, he just sit there with him to make sure, you know, they don't get bullied or anything. Because those are his children. Before they anything, they're his children. So he going to make sure they straight. And I have no problem with Ball, you know, riding for his kids and everything. But the thing is this. You are doing them a disservice. Because if you watch their gameplay, they're trying to be the showman. They're trying to be the star. And when it, the jumpers are not dropping, the team's not winning. And the kids in high school, they standing around watching the show. Because they got ESPN and all these people trying to get video footage of ball. So, I'm done with it. I just wanted to let y'all know. I'm glad LeBron said something about this. Because now, maybe since he said it, you know, people will say, oh, okay. He's right. This dude is out of control. And then Brown Tooth could go sit itself down somewhere. I'm out.